Yeah. All right, so let's jump into your um, mm -hmm. Check the metronome before you started. No. Okay. So, <laughs> sure so yeah, what you want to do? A lot of these etudes, Allison, are are going to be at tempos that if you haven't played it before, you may have to back off quite a bit from what they suggest. Mm -hmm. So you were. Around seven. So you're pretty close to what they're offering here, seventy-six, um, with the minimum they're saying. What? The, their suggestions of tempos it, are to abide by what the, the, the words mean. Allegro vivace. Vivace is pretty brisk, pretty, mm -hmm. pretty rapid. And so you were getting that feeling come across. And so this is more of a, a literal way to communicate this, the, the numbers to us on the national. Um, I love the whole beginning in terms of the, just jumping in with all that energy. When we got towards the middle here and we had to do a lot of stopping and going mm -hmm. and, re, and restarting. So what I would do is probably give some careful thought to the tempo you're going to play. And here we just it made all uh, most so a little bit slower, and then the off tempo from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So even though we can play these things at a certain tempo, sections are really great. If the middle sections or the end sections are a little bit uh, require a little bit slower tempo, adjust that for the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then maybe it'll give you more time to actually deal with more musical stuff. But the the opening is just really exciting. So. Um, I also like your distinction between rhythms, 16ths, 37ths, fantastic. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, oh, I had one quick silly question for you. What arpeggio was in this band right here? Um, B flat, C sharp, E, G, B flat, and B flat. Maybe it's a minor one, right? Play it, see your ear helps you tell what it is. Play the notes on the keyboard for a second. B flat, B flat, B flat, E, G. Now hold them all down for a second. And how many half steps? One, two, three. Three. One, two, three. So it's diminished. Yes, diminished seven. Okay. That's our famous diminished seven, okay. which you know all of them. Yeah. Right? So what I might do is, when you're in your music, 
I'm ready to submit. And that way you don't have to think about it. In fact, all of this is bad. Now notice, this is a C sharp and that's a B flat. Mm -hmm. They're the same note on the fingering on the clarinet. So we're going to have to kind of use our knowledge of theory that uh, they're in harmonic notes and we don't have to freak out if we see a C sharp and a B flat. It's all part of the same sort of like thought here. Uh, okay, so when you read this, think a little bit of music theory stuff in terms of um, okay. connecting things. That'll help you not have to look at every single note. Um, let's try for the minimum also, because all this was just great. So, nice flowing, flowing connection of notes and soft back and forth. <laughs> So can we do ba da 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 da? This kind of phrasing it teaches us phrasing. So try that one more time. Yeah, that's the idea. That's the great. Now let's put in a couple of dynamics. Even though it's descending for a little bit of a piano, we need this second. Is a G minor? Yeah, so that's the relative minor. Right. And so notice that, and so therefore, what is that F sharp? The leading chord? Yeah, and the, <laughs> what's the arc? Um, it's, a, it's an arpeggio oh. here. What is that whole arpeggio? It's a Roman numeral of G minor. It's so it would be the 7 or the 5? Five? 5, 7. Yeah. Okay. B, F sharp, A, C. Okay. And so we're starting on the the scale to be in F. Well, it's the 7 scale then. Of G minor and right. of the five chord. That's fair. The, the B F sharp, the third. The third. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm kind of asking it to you in a roundabout way, but basically this is a five chord, a five seven. So, what does that tell us? Well, if we're in here in one. <laughs> We want them to hear that. So try it again. Okay. Don't rush these first two notes rhythmically. We want just a little bit on the final rhythm. Just a little slower. D da 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 D da 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 da. Six, eight, we're going to feel them in groups of two. One, one and two and three and four and five. Now we're going to take that away, Alice, and just think it. So okay. our, our important notes metrically are the beginnings of the tenutos, but they're just going to be little sort of metric posts for us to get to that big five, seven chord. Okay, so just think them now, but don't extend them too, too much. But definitely gear your crescendo and land on that F sharp and stretch it. Yeah. 
breathing. But maybe take your breath in from down here and then like your upper, so like, and then this fills up and then just, okay, so try that. beginning of the piece but also how it, it interacts with the whole piece like here is the inner muscle is a little slower we, so we did a, 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 a observation of tempo second thing is we made some observations about harmonically what the arpeggios are and how they relate both to the key and to the phrase that they're in there this is a 5-7 in B minor so those harmonic observations are really really important and then the phrasing what kind of tools do we do to phrase we have tonitos over notes we have Legato connections of our notes. Dynamic is the biggest tool we have mm -hmm. for, for phrasing, so we crescendo into things. We crescendo and decrescendo into things that are important structural notes in a phrase. And so we know they're important if there's an analysis of like a 5-7 chord, the chord changes, mm -hmm. that's important, that's an event. So look at your tempo, um, adjust your tempos, look at uh, arpeggios, what they are, figure them out so you can now snapshot them and not have to actually look at every single note anymore. And then develop some fluency so you're connecting the notes without pulsing your air and just phrasing straight through. So when you approach the etudes like this, you're, you're a very, very thorough practicer. It's very good. So you just kind of polish and adjust what you're doing well already. Okay. And you're reacting really quickly. So I, rather than us finishing this out, I want to get to your Artie Shaw. Okay. But you understand about this. Did you do another one? Yeah, I had the next one. Okay.